Hi there, and welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. You know, it's not that complicated, but boy, do we try to complicate our relationship with God. This is not something that's just something in our generation. This has been going all the way back to the time of Moses and even before then. The children of Israel were given the opportunity to come into the presence of the Lord a few months after they began their journey across the desert. Could have even been only a few weeks. Moses gave them some instruction, clean yourself up, look presentable, here are the boundaries, but God is going to come and he wants to meet with you. Well, the children of Israel decided that they weren't too interested in drawing near to this mysterious God who came down upon them with smoke and clouds. And so they chose to put distance between themselves and this mysterious God who brought them out of Egypt. God did what they asked. He allowed Moses to be their spokesperson and their go-between. And God put together a set of rules and rituals for them to follow that if they did, then they would receive blessings and all the things that they needed. It would have been so much easier if those laws hadn't needed to be put into place, if they had chosen to be in relationship with him. But God did as they asked, and it was pretty complicated. The smallest of infractions demanded ritualistic washings and offerings on behalf of the offender. And if those weren't done exactly correctly down to the letter of the law, then the whole nation of Israel would suffer. And only a handful of people before Jesus showed up on the earth dared to call God friend. In contrast, Jesus asked no more of his disciples then, follow me. There were no employment tests to take, no manuals to read, and no skill set required beyond moving their feet towards him. As soon as they chose to follow him, however, the first disciples were immediately drawn into the inner court. There was no need for Peter and Andrew to run off to the temple to get all cleaned up with all the sin offerings done before they fellowshiped with the master. These guys came off a fishing boat. They were stinky thinking of not smelling really good. Let's talk about the prodigal son. Now that story must have shocked its Jewish audience. How could the prodigal father rush to embrace his son who literally reeked of his sinful life? He reeked of the pig pen he ended up in. He is clothes probably reeked from cheap perfume from the women of the night that he was hanging around with all the time. Now they were probably thinking, Would wouldn't the prodigal's father be afraid of defilement or being seen by the community as defiled because he embraced his son? But the father wasn't the least bit concerned about that. He chose relationship over ritual and he did not wait until his bankrupt son, who didn't have a penny to his name, somehow scraped the funds together so he could go off to the temple to become clean again that is, if the priest would even let the boy across the temple grounds. No, the father took it upon himself to restore the son to full fellowship. He knew it was way beyond his son's capabilities to do anything to restore relationship with his dad. Unfortunately, there are many believers who believe they must clean up their act before they fellowship with God once again. Some allow shame and fear to hold them back from the God that they need the most. There are even those who place themselves under the Old Testament law, forsaking the freedom brought for them on the cross. And if we sin, do we run to Jesus who freely forgives us or do we place ourselves in exile until we somehow pay off our debt and prove ourselves worthy of his forgiveness? In John 8, 31 to 36, Jesus said this. So Jesus said to the Jews 
who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you truly are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I can just see that son walking up the road, and when his father hugged him, all the shackles of shame and fear fell off of him, and he was set free. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. But if the slave doesn't remain in the sinful house forever, the son remains free. So if the son sets you free, talking about Jesus, then you will be free indeed. As I was reading this just now, I thought of this. You know, there's the elder son in the story of the prodigal son. The guy who had a chip on his shoulder, who was angry at his younger brother and accused his father. Let's replace Jesus in that picture as our older brother who paid the ultimate price so he could stand at the gate with his arms just as wide open as his father saying, welcome home, we've been waiting for you. Hebrews 10, 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean by the blood of the lamb from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. If you think you've gone too far, if you think you've got to prove yourself to God, quite often that is a sign that you have not entered into a heart relationship with God because in that heart relationship you will embrace his love, his tenderness, his forgiveness and there won't be as much of a temptation to head down in the opposite direction and if you happen to do that there is always a way back. So today if you think you've gone too far picture this your heavenly father and your elder brother the moment they see your face in the distance, they're setting off at a run to usher you back into full fellowship.